Hello and welcome to episode 55 of the Dash Falls Free Amigos podcast. I'm Mark Mason and I'm joined by my two fellow Amigos, Joel Valenzuela. How's it going, Joel? He's good. He's here. And Brian, uh, Brian, how you doing? I almost said your surname then. How's it going, Brian? <laughs> excellent, excellent, excellent. But um, we have a special guest on today's show joining us live from New York, Ian Freeman of Free Talk Live. How's it going, Ian? Hey, guys. Uh, I'm going great. I'm actually here in Manhattan, uh, just about to a talk radio conference here uh, on 26th Street. So bear, bear with me. But thanks for having me. Excellent. Cool. So it's been a pretty crazy, crazy, crazy week, but we're really happy to have Ian on the show because Ian's actually been very active on our business merchant directory, discoverdash.com. We've been a bit of a, a foot soldier and an ambassador for Dash. Do you just want to tell the community what you've been up to? Yeah. So um, I moved to New Hampshire over a decade ago, like 12 years ago, as part of a libertarian migration. There's this New Hampshire freedom migration that's ongoing here. Where libertarian, voluntarist, uh, peaceful, anarchist types uh, have been moving here for many years, and so we've got this real core group of, uh, of freedom-loving activists who naturally are attracted to cryptocurrency, and uh, and so we started to introduce uh, businesses locally in the Keene area and out in Portsmouth and mostly all around southern New Hampshire to cryptocurrency back when it was just Bitcoin. You know, we were doing this as far back as like 2013. And, uh, and then, of course, uh, Bitcoin hit all the bumps in the road that it hit last year with all the disagreements uh, in their community. And then, of course, uh, the, the fees went insane. And, uh, after, and this was after we'd already recruited several businesses in the Keene area where, where I live uh, to be accepting Bitcoin at point of sale. So, like, you know, I was one of the primary people on the, on the ground doing this stuff. And uh, I had to go to these business owners kind of hat in hand and apologize to them saying, well, I'm so sorry, you know, this, this isn't working out because nobody wants to spend Bitcoin anymore. You know, you've got all this equipment. We had, you know, they had tablets with software on it from BitPay that they were using to, uh, to accept the crypto at point of sale. And it's like, nobody's coming in to spend Bitcoin. What do we do? Um, well, luckily the folks uh, from Portsmouth, AnyPay, I don't know if you've had them. Have you, got, have you guys had uh, the AnyPay guys on your show yet? Not yet. Not yet. No. It's on the schedule, you'll, you'll, I'd say. Yeah, you ought to. They're, uh, they're really great. So Derek, Derek J. Freeman and Steven Zeiler, uh, they launched their own cryptocurrency point of sale system in the summertime of last year. So like right during the time, like it, I think it was August when it came out. So like right when Bitcoin split uh, into Bitcoin Cash. That's when they came out with this thing. And when it launched, uh, and it basically is designed to compete with BitPay's point of sale system. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but it's like uh, something you can run on a tablet. It's got, uh, if you've seen Joel's uh, CNN piece, it's actually in that piece uh, when the cashiers are doing their thing. So, you know, the cashier punches in the, the amount of the total, they hit collect, and then a QR code comes up. And BitPay at the time was the only company that was doing anything at that level. I've, I've evaluated every other company that's claimed to be doing point of sale and nobody could match BitPay until AnyPay came out. And when they launched, they launched with both Bitcoin and with Dash. So it was the very first time that we could offer merchants a choice and we could offer customers a choice of which cryptocurrency to pay with. And so immediately, as soon as it came, because I have been, I was waiting for it and waiting for it, finally it comes out. So I go to all these businesses that I'd already previously set up to take Bitcoin and I, you know, I said, hey, look, you know, Bitcoin, it's just not working out the way we'd hoped it has. It's people aren't using it anymore. But what they were said is, you know, most people haven't heard of Dash and they might have heard of Bitcoin. And I was really happy when these business owners were like, heck, yeah, let's try Dash. Let's do this. And so I got them all set up with uh, Dash wallets to receive their their payments. We enabled uh, Dash with AnyPay and almost everybody nowadays you know it's now six or seven or eight or however many months nine nine months later since that's happened if you go into a local business that takes cryptocurrency and you watch like if we have a crypto meetup or something almost everybody pays with dash and uh very very few things on board and with and then continuing of course once you bring several then it gets easier to bring others on board right because then you can point to the existing businesses in town and say oh well so-and-so's doing this and so-and-so yeah so 
I'd can't... like to point out during these little moments of uh, interruption that this is one of those cases where I've kind of ranted a little bit more about sort of loser mentality where people sort of sit around and wait for the whole world to start except the cryptocurrency. And then here we have like a story of a couple people that just said, I want to spend it now. And then they just, there's no point of sale. We'll make one. They make one. And then they start talking to merchants and then you get half dozen. Then you get a dozen. And then you get more. And then you get on national news, international news. And then it just sort of goes from there. And like, all you have to do is just like start doing it. And so many people are afraid to start because like, well, we don't have the tools in place. Uh, how are people going to do that? And people forget that it's like a peer to peer cash system. It's not, well, you don't have to wait for the government to come in and airdrop and just say, well, this is, we have spoken and this is something that now you can use. It's like people sort of forget the point of crypto, the entire whole entire point of crypto. So how many people, the Free State Project, how many do you all have now, Ian? Oh, um, well, I, by the way, I've stepped inside in the hopes that uh, it's not too noisy in here and that I've got better Wi-Fi, perhaps. Um, so the Free State Project, I think, claims like 2,400 movers uh, here to New Hampshire. I don't know what uh, on top of that, because there's a larger migration of people who are libertarian. Many, almost all the people I know are also into cryptocurrency. Um, there's other people who, you know, they didn't join the Free State Project or they don't want to join the, that, um, but they moved here anyway. So mm -hmm. in, uh, in different areas, you may have as few as like, you know, a dozen or as many as several dozen people. Um, it's, it's unmatched. I mean, there's nothing else like this anywhere in the world. And we see new people moving across mostly southern New Hampshire uh, every single month, especially during the warmer months like this. You're more likely to see more people showing up. And it, by the way, just a quick sound check. Is it too noisy in the background right now? Because it is a little, a little uh, loud. It's better. It's you better. Well. Yeah, I think the I think connection's as long better, as you, so I'm um, happy. Yeah. Okay. As long as okay. you're not high. It might help to hit the mute button when you're not talking, but it's not that, okay. uh, it's not that imperative. I'll try but to remember I'm, that. I've got a question for you, Ian. So I know that you've been passionate about Dash for some time now, but I want to know... What, and I think the other people would like to know watching, why are you so passionate about Dash? Why are you going out and being evangelist about Dash and trying to onboard as many businesses as possible? So, I mean, um, as I explained before, I don't know if I was cutting out at the time, but uh, when AnyPay launched in New Hampshire, uh, they launched with Dash and Bitcoin was when they launched. And that, mean, that meant that business owners who were already taking Bitcoin, so they were already on board with the idea of accepting cryptocurrency from their customers, could then finally give their customers a choice uh, for the very first time ever. So Dash was there when we needed it. Uh, Dash, of course, as you know, has been around for a while and uh, it is the only cryptocurrency that I'm aware of that really markets itself as digital cash, as something that people can, can and are encouraged to use in real life. And that for me is really important. We want people to not just hold cryptocurrency, but you know, to, uh, to spend it as well. Um, that's you know, part of the reason why Bitcoin became worth something is because people were using it. If everybody just held on to crypto, then it would just be a technological marvel and you know, that's about it. So Dash was there, it was ready when, when we needed it. You know, when, uh, when Bitcoin was faltering, Dash was there to pick up the slack and it has done a great job. You know, the fees are low, it's easy to use, and uh, the AnyPay system that they've developed is uh, it's fantastic, and it makes it so slick and, and so easy. It was great to see that they got their, uh, their proposal uh, approved last month because they've already done, at AnyPay, they've done so much you know, without asking for any help. Uh, they, they've got a working system that is in use in real life in dozens of businesses uh, in New Hampshire right now, and uh, you know, that's, that's awesome. So I was impressed. Yeah, you want to shout out a couple of the, the local businesses that take Dash? Sure. Uh, well, of course, you can go to discoverdash.com and see uh, virtually all of them in Keene and uh, in Portsmouth. But in, in Keene, there's Local Burger. Uh, there's uh, Hot Hogs Barbecue. There's Little Zoe's Pizza. There's Route 101 Local Goods. You can get your car repaired with Dash at Wilder Automotive. Uh, there's just this, like, within the last two weeks, there's a dentist uh, that is now taking Dash. Um, there's, uh, let's see, Corner News, which has been taking cryptocurrency since 2013. Uh, they are on board as well. So there's several of them just in the downtown area. If you go a little bit outside of Keene, you, uh, there's another barbecue place called Kirby's Q up in Alstead. 
Uh, I don't know all of them in uh, Portsmouth, but there's at least another dozen in downtown Portsmouth uh, as well. So very, very exciting. And of course, you know, the other reason that Dash is uh, superior to Bitcoin is their, the governance structure, which has allowed Dash to do this outreach and making people aware of it. I remember uh, my roommate came home from a trip that he went on and he was just, just surprised he had seen a dash commercial on the airline flight that he was at and then literally one week after that i was talking with the owner of local burger and he saw the same dash advertisement on an airline flight that he was on so that uh that 10 percent of the mining rewards that, that gets spent on these things like that uh that's just so important and while other cryptos have that now i think it was dash that pioneered that concept and so again they were there first and being there first with the with the new idea it counts for a lot yeah i really like that airplane um advertising deal they they didn't pass it last time because the budget was so full but hopefully they come back that was that's i like that one a lot do you just want to talk about your experience on the actual process of onboarding a business um i've not actually seen any pay in person i'm looking forward to going to pork fest and seeing it in action but have you losing me there i don't know if you're losing me at this point but you might be okay can you hear me now hopefully you can hear me now i was just going to ask is there any setbacks with any pay when you've been trying to onboard these businesses has there been any barriers that have caused issues that you think that we need to overcome Mm, we may have lost Ian. Yeah, I'm not sure if he's getting me free. Um, so. I'll pass it to over to Joel then, because he's, he's used it in person, because there's plenty of businesses in his hometown that's accepting uh, Dash on AnyPay. What, what are the barriers that you see? Like, you know, if you could have a wish list of things to improve that could make the process better, um, has anything come about that, you, that you've seen? Well, obviously the... The easiest thing is to be able to have someone who's like a trained representative going around and being able to offer something candid, something out of the box. You can just say, I'll plug this into your thing and then it works. And then of course, offer direct incentives. And some businesses just like are into the concept of cryptocurrency. Oh, I'll get some of this. I'll hold some of this wine. I'll give it a shot. But a lot of people just are like, bottom line, that's, that's all I can care about at this stage in my life. And that. For those kinds of people, I can over, so for example, the square point of sale system or something like that, you can offer um, a much lower fee because that, that tends to be pretty absurd with a couple extra steps if you pair with Uphold. Being able to have like a cheap, easy fiat conversion type option would just make everything just so much easier. But really, the biggest thing is it's not a pitch that pitches itself. Not everyone cares about crypto and not everyone, pretty much no one knows about Dash. And that's one thing that I think has been very um, misunderstood about any pay is you want it to take Bitcoin and other things like that. Because as soon as, as soon as you get people in the door, because people have heard about one thing or they're saying, oh yeah, what about this coin? You say, well, it's like number whatever in the rankings here or well, but what about these other ones? It's like it's everyone's like, yeah, come on, you're, you're just pitching me your thing. You're just into this thing. But if mm -hmm. you pitch them a multi-coin solution, first off, they they don't feel like they're taking as much of a risk, and then also pretty soon it just becomes obvious which one's king. And right. be, most people don't really know what anything other than Bitcoin is. Maybe Ethereum. Yeah, but even after you pitch it in to these merchants, are they like, okay, they're buying the multi-asset coin idea? Okay, and then you're like, okay, do you have a tablet to install the application? Like, do you get any roadblocks? I will give them the tablet. So I've got a stack of uh, RCA tablets that uh, they're 35 bucks at Walmart, and they work great with AnyPay. So, uh, you know, for me, I, I work with the Shire Free Church, and it's part of our mission to spread cryptocurrency as part of our overall mission of fostering peace. And uh, so in order to do that, I'm willing to do whatever it takes to, uh, to help somebody come on board, uh, which means, you know, I'll provide the tablet. That's totally fine. I provide my time. Uh, I don't get paid for this. I do this uh, for the love of, uh, of cryptocurrency and helping people learn about it and helping them accept it. Um, you know, if you want to talk about objections to it, 
the the number one objection I think has to be beyond you know just confusion in general and you know that's easy enough to answer those questions you can tell you know tell these folks hey look you know compared to credit cards you don't have to pay any fees right your customers pay the fee to send you get to take 100 percent there's so many different reasons why people should do this but if the business owner doesn't perceive that there's a demand for it they're not going to do it which is why having a you know groundswell a movement of people who are willing to actually spend their crypto at these businesses helps so if i go into you know a local pizza shop and ask them hey do you guys take uh, cryptocurrency or do you take bitcoin you always leave you have to leave with bitcoin because that's the one that people know or you know do you accept cryptocurrency they'll say well nobody's ever asked us that before but if somebody else has gone in before that and you know i'm not saying to you know to fake it or anything like that like if i'm a legitimate customer if i've been in there before that kind of thing you know then i've got a rapport with the staff or rapport with the owners they're going to they're going to be more likely to take me seriously but if it's still just me that's still not going to be enough to make most of them you know do anything but if they hear from me and then a, another week later, somebody else goes into the same place and asks the same question and then another person. So like when we got uh, Wilder Automotive on board, I was the second person to ask about cryptocurrency in that particular case. And that's when he really kind of perked up because he was like, oh, somebody came in and asked me this uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago. And then he was, he's a fairly young guy. So he was interested in instantly. And uh, so it doesn't take a whole lot but it takes more than what I think most people have in their area. Um, so the fact that we have this concentration of activists here is the key. You know, you have to have demand on the ground. That business owner has to perceive that this is what their customers want. And it's not just something that they're being pitched uh, by, a, by a representative, right? Like, you know, try to imagine what it would have been like if, uh, you know, in 1950 or whenever it was that credit cards first came out. Imagine being that, that credit card salesperson, right? Going in to business owners and trying to explain to them why they need to take this funny thing that nobody has ever accepted before and nobody has ever, you know, asked them about before. They're going to get, you know, the business owners are going to roll their eyes and they're going to say, yeah, thanks. I had another sales pitch earlier today, but I'm not interested. So they have to have that, uh, that interest from the customer. Have you found that it's easier now that cryptos have gotten like more popular here in the last, you know, since like December and the whole, the bubble so after the bubble? Um, I definitely, I mean, that, that certainly got some people's attention. It was certainly easy to say, oh, $10,000 Bitcoin and, you know, get, get people's attention. But it gets easier when, uh, you know, sort of like, like in the, um, the business I'm in here, I'm at this, uh, this radio conference, when my show, uh, Free Talk Live, was on five stations, it was a lot harder to get people to take us seriously and to uh, really consider adding our show. Same thing's true of cryptocurrency. When it's not accepted by anyone, then nobody wants to accept it. But if there's a half a dozen businesses in town and you're in a place like Keene or Portsmouth where the whole population of each of those areas are about the same size, about 23,000, 22,000 people living there, the business owners, everybody knows everybody else, right? So I uh, talked to one business owner recently I wanted to get some lawn work done and I reached out to him. I said, hey, will you take uh, cryptocurrency? And he said he's not ready to take it yet, but he was aware of it. And he even knew the girl who owns Hot Hogs, which is the, uh, the barbecue shop uh, in town that takes it. So, you know, if the local business owners who are accepting it are having a positive experience, and they are because, you know, generally the price has gone up over the last year of all of these things. Uh, then they're going to say good things to their friends, and that's going to lead it lead them to be more likely to take uh, take the idea seriously. Uh, or, for instance, when this dentist came on board just recently, I contacted my dentist, who I had actually just a few uh, weeks prior to that had asked him if he was willing to take cryptocurrency, and he seemed kind of interested, but you know, kind of blew me off at the same time. So I sent him a nice email explaining to him what has happened, where one of his uh, competitors is now taking crypto. And I said to him, look, I'm, I'm kind of torn here. I really have had a good experience with you and your staff. I mean, I've, I've been at that dentist's office for more than a decade. And I said, I'm torn. I'm really interested in helping businesses take cryptocurrency. I want to stay where I am, but at the same time, I kind of want to give this, this other guy my business. And I said, would you be willing to seriously give this another look and give this some serious consideration? And he wrote me an email back and he said, give me 30 days. I'm going to take a look into it. So again, it's, you know, having existing business owners already on board is a huge factor and having that customer demand is also a huge factor. And we don't have that many crypto people here. We really don't. I mean, I'm talking about maybe a, 
I mean, there's there's certainly dozens and dozens of cryptocurrency people in New Hampshire, but the solid majority of them, they don't spend it. And that's a huge problem. So we, mm -hmm. you know, even even with the with a half a dozen people in the keen area who are the regular crew that goes out to the crypto meetups and spends dash at these businesses, it's still not a whole lot, but it's been enough to, you know, put us into the top five of, uh, you know, areas. So a little bit goes a long way. Yeah, hopefully sometime soon in the future, we have the interest bearing accounts where people put, you know, $1,000 in and then they're going to get part of the masternode reward. So hopefully that'll help people to spend uh, their crypto more. Uh, one thing I wanted to ask about is the, the LRN.FM. How long have y'all been running the, the Dash commercial? I think y'all were working with Core like over a year or something, right? So uh, my show, Free Talk Live, is a nationally syndicated talk show. We're on over 190 radio stations from coast to coast in the United States. Uh, LRN.FM is our little internet network. Mm. It's kind of something I started as uh, just sort of a liberty outreach hobby. It features dozens of shows, most of which are podcast based. So you guys' show is actually on LRN.FM. You're not you're not live, but you're, we pick up your audio podcast and then we we replay that during the week uh, when we when we play podcasts. So we've got your show on there, and then there's uh, the Crypto Show, which is also another Dash friendly uh, show. They've been on LRN for probably since y'all had probably since before they even had the Dash sponsorship. So it was last year where we came to Dash. And we offered a proposal to sponsor Free Talk Live, which, of course, got Dash promotions on the air on those hundred and something, whatever it was at the time, 170 uh, radio stations. And those are real, you know, FM, AM licensed radio stations, the kind of stations you'll hear, you know, Rush Limbaugh, Sean Hannity, those, those kind of shows on. Um, so that got Dash out in front of, you know, a whole bunch of new listeners who may or may not have ever even heard of cryptocurrency before. And of course, we're longtime crypto zealots uh, on Free Talk Live. We we got brought into it way back when when uh, Roger Veer, who's also known as Bitcoin Jesus, was one of our listeners back in the day. And actually, he was a he was an advertiser with us before Bitcoin. And then he heard us talking about Bitcoin on the air because it was in the news for some reason. And then uh, you know we didn't have any at that point, but he caught the vision for it and he went out and bought a bunch of it. And you know, the rest is history. So. Um, so to answer your question about LRN, the Dash ads air when, or they aired when Free Talk Live was on, but the Dash has not officially sponsored LRN.FM. So hopefully that'll be coming up next uh, with the current uh, proposal that I just put up two days ago or yesterday. And when does Free Talk Live, when does it air? It's every single night. We're seven nights a week. So we're one of the few radio broadcast radio shows that's actually every single night live, uh, seven to 10 at night Eastern time. Excellent. And of course, we're on the internet too. We've got podcasts, we've got live streams, we've got a Twitch feed uh, for video. So we, uh, we, we've we been around for a long time. We've been doing Free Talk Live since, uh, syndicated since 2004, and we started down in Florida as a local show in 2002. Interesting. Well, um, a little bit of trivia for our podcast fans out there. Um, we was, I think it was actually on your show that Joel was actually calling in and Brian got involved as well. And that was kind of the trigger that actually kicked the Free Amigos podcast because we, we'd spoken about doing it. But we, we was kind of like umming and ahhing about it, seeing what the priority should be. And um, I, I wasn't sure, Joel, was it Ian that was interviewing you at the time? It was, um, I was in studio for like, I guess the whole few hour show. And we we're just talking about Dash and stuff. And then... It was when we had a troll call in that Brian was like, oh, I got to get involved in this. And he calls in and just yells at him. And then he's like, that was fun. We should do a show. And we're like, I guess we're doing a show. Yeah. There's no, you can't have a podcast without having a Monero troll somewhere. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> it's not possible. Yes, I yeah. remember now. And Brian called so in. On, on that note, Ian, how has it been being a Dash shill now? in a world where I'm sure there's a large percentage of your viewer base that was pro Monero in some kind of a way, or at least there's a large percentage of the vocal ones. Yeah, sure. Uh, so, I mean, I don't uh, consider myself to be a shill for Dash. We've never, uh, and, and the same thing's true for uh, Bitcoin or Bitcoin Cash or anything anything else that's ever been involved with uh, with Free Talk Live. We've always been critical on the issues where we feel like we've, you know, we need to have, we, where we have something to say. 
Uh, and uh, and it's been interesting because you know when people have called in with critique because we're open phones every night, so anybody can call in and you know bring up whatever they want, and that leads to some very interesting conversations. Uh, that of course has encouraged us to do even more research into Dash to be able to you know look at some of these questions and, and answer them. And uh, you know I'm not I'm not an engineer, um, so I can't really speak to it exactly. But uh, you know it seems to me that Dash probably isn't the best privacy coin. I mean, uh, you know, if you, if you look at the uh, the different privacy technologies out there, Monero probably is better uh, technology for, for privacy, but uh, Dash is a coin that is useful in real life. And uh, Monero could never be used to buy a cup of coffee. I could never possibly go into uh, Corner News and get a newspaper with Monero, not if you have to spend 4 or 10 or $12 uh, for a fee to, to buy a thing. So, you know, every different cryptocurrency has its ups and its downs and it has its place and Dash has made its place in, in real life and we've helped make that happen. And there's there's nothing that any Monero troll or whoever, any Dash hater can say to deny the fact that it's Dash that's used on the ground in real life in New Hampshire. And then when I say, you know, super majority of the time, I'm talking 95% of the people who are paying with cryptocurrency are paying with Dash. And there are reasons for that. I'd like to add to that um, rough off the hand statistic. I believe any pay statistic was something like 80 to 85% of everything processed through the point of sale. Uh, Dash. I believe it. Something like 78 or 9% of the US dollar value. And the reason why it tends to, and of course that's overwhelmingly pro Dash, but the reason why it isn't as high as maybe what you, something you're quoting is because they built it to take it in the Free State Bitcoin shop. And that's where they don't take fiat currency at all. And so you have people who are crypto fanboys yeah. showing up to buy crypto material. So you have a much higher percentage of people being like, oh, I get a 20% discount on a Doge pillow. If I spend Dogecoin, sure. I'm they gonna are get cool some pillows. They are really cool pillows. And yeah, you have to, you have to spend Doge to there get the discount right on, the, <laughs> on the Doge pillow. So yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. If you go to a crypto meetup in Keene and you uh, you know ask everybody what they paid with, it's almost it's going to be close to 100 percent. And you know the only reason I said 95 percent is there was like one guy I think used Bitcoin Cash uh, within the last uh, several weeks. Um, but uh, yeah, so I mean, so you know we try to be honest with people. And when a when a crypto comes on board, we do research uh, into it. So one of our current sponsors is is Zen Cash, and when they when they came on board. You know, or before they came on board, I looked into it closely because we don't want to just take anybody. Uh, and I said this on the proposal I made on uh, the Dash Central site is the reason why we came to Dash is because we like the idea of cryptocurrency being used in real life. And Dash was there first. And they've got the best network. They've got the best setup. They've got the uh, the promotional dollars to make it happen. So it's uh, it's happening. And it's so exciting to to be a part of seeing that happen and if we can help promote that on the air and help other people see that this is, you know, this is a real thing and it's a real alternative to Bitcoin that's actually useful, um, I think Dash is the is the way to go. So yeah, I think I saw. Unfortunately, was, didn't Zencash get fifty one percent attacked a couple of days ago? Yeah, go well, they did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's not say. as bad as it sounded. We actually had uh, one of their programmers on to explain it all, and you know, they've, they've got some cool stuff going on there too. There's no doubt about it. And so, obviously, you know, if, uh, Dash is coming back to Free Talk Live, which we hope that uh, that y'all do, because even though what happened was last year, uh, we had a whole year's worth of Dash promotions, and then it kind of dropped off at the end of the year, and we just hadn't gotten around. We had some restructuring going on, sort of behind the scenes with Free Talk Live, and we finally got got around to putting the the next proposal together. So, uh, so that's up now, and it's uh, we're hoping that we can come back. But of course, we've still talked positively about Dash. It's just that the difference between you know then and now is. We don't talk about it every night, and if we are, you know, if we're sponsored, then then we we have an excuse to go to Dash Force News and get the latest headlines about Dash, and you know, talk more about Dash than we would just sort of normally talk about it. Can you yeah. break down your new proposal for me? I've not had a chance to look at it yet. Is it just a continuation of of the ad programs, or is there is there more to it? We expanded it a little bit, um, so we're continuing it with. So we're doing the same thing we did last year with 100. Now we have more stations. Uh, so 192 stations are, is our current count. Uh, of course, you know, also internet podcast ads. So, you know, you'll hear plenty of Dash promotion during Free Talk Live in both recorded and live form. So on Free Talk Live, we offer three different types of advertisements. We have the, the sort of the live 
promotions that we do where we're on the air, we're doing the show, we're talking about Dash, we're talking about the latest news around Dash, that kind of thing. Um, so those are the most valuable ads we have, obviously. Then there's the recorded radio ads. These are the ones that go out only on the radio. So obviously our live show is on the radio too, but the recorded radio ads, our podcast listeners won't hear those, but the radio listeners do. So like during our commercial breaks, we'll have produced uh, advertisements, which we already have, and we can obviously make new ones as needed. Um, and uh, those will be heard by the radio listeners only. And then we have podcast only ads that go out to our podcast audience and are only heard by the podcast listeners. And of course, our podcast listeners are more likely to be like the real fans, right? The people that are going to sit there and, and listen for the whole show, um, as many shows as, as they can. So those are the three ads that we were doing last year that we will renew for, for this time. Uh, but then expanding beyond that, uh, uh, LRN.FM is actually up on satellite. And uh, so there's something called free-to-air satellite, which many people in the United States probably don't know much about. But if you go over to uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, you go to Cuba, you go to uh, a lot of poorer countries, Middle East, uh, a lot of places in Europe, surprisingly, from what I understand, where, for instance, you know, in Africa, if you're making a dollar a day, which, of course, is one of the reasons why Dash is way better than Bitcoin, because the fees are so much lower and people in poor countries can actually use it. Um, but if you're making a dollar a day and you want to be entertained, you can't afford to buy, you know, direct TV or whatever equivalent of it is that they have over there. So what they do is they hook up a, you know, they, they actually purchase a dish sort of on a payments plan from somebody who supplies a satellite dish. They get that set up and then they point it at a satellite that's got a bunch of unencrypted or uh, you know, free to air, as they call it, channels. And so they're able to, to receive literally hundreds of uh, television and radio channels, and we, LRN.FM, has one of the, our channels is up there uh, over sub-Saharan Africa. So your show, when it airs, is being heard in places like Cameroon, Sierra Leone, Kenya, uh, you know, all, all across. You can, you can go to our, uh, our proposal actually has the satellite uh, coverage maps on it. So you can actually see it's like the majority of Africa is covered with the signal. Now, how many people are listening? Well, it's a it's broadcast, so you really don't have any way to know. But we've actually received comments from listeners. Um, there's a great story about a guy in Cameroon who contacted us a few years ago. So we've actually been up over Africa since 2012. So uh, we've done uh, satellite broadcasting over North and Central America since 2010, over Africa since 2012. And so the idea is to brand our satellite sponsorship. So we'll have a satellite sponsor, and it will be Dash. And uh, that means Dash ads, recorded ads, will run across the entire network. So, you know, during our live shows, like uh, Ernest Hancock in the morning with Declare Your Independence, during all the re repeat shows, during the podcasts, you know, we run advertisements between those shows, between uh, the breaks. And so we'll ensure that Dash ads are running multiple times per day, you know, at least probably once an hour during the live and recorded shows. So we'll, we'll be hitting up, um, you know, all those international listeners who, of course, need to hear about cryptocurrency and they need to hear about Dash. So that would be one aspect that it's expanding to. And then we also have a new show on LRN that just started this year called The Call to Freedom, uh, which is a great show hosted by Will Coley. He's one of the founders of Muslims for Liberty. He lives in Keene, where, uh, where I live, and he actually does his show from our studio. He does it from four to seven in the afternoon. So right before Free Talk Live is his show. And they do a uh, crypto hour every single day at five o'clock Eastern time where they dive deep, they get into you know different cryptos and the cryptocurrency related news of the day and talk about that. And once a week, they'll actually like review one cryptocurrency and you know talk about whether it's a scam or if it's questionable or if it actually seems to be legit. And they'll interview various different people from the crypto universe. And so uh, the proposal also includes, includes a sponsorship on his show, which will include of course live promotions and so there's like a couple extra shows that we sort of thrown in 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 there and you know all of it we've managed to do for you know less than 33 dash or approximately 33 dash per month so you know basically less than a half of a percent of uh, the monthly totals which we think is fairly reasonable if you were to actually go down to let's say your local talk radio station and ask them for whatever their rate card is and purchase advertisements for dash i suspect you will be paying about what you pay to get on 192 stations and all of our satellites from uh, from our offers. So it's really, you can't beat what, what uh, the prices that we can do because we can leverage all of those stations at once. 
So how many how many stations does it air on? 192? Is that right? Free Talk Live. Free Talk Live is on 192, and then plus those satellite channels, and you know, plus internet, plus streaming. Plus yeah, cut out there for a minute. So are you literally reaching? I know it's difficult because you're broadcasting, but on the just on the FM stations alone, is your like outreach literally? hundreds of thousands, potentially millions of listeners. So we can take a shot in the dark um, based on the market sizes that we have and based on, you know, the stations that we're on. So, right, like, so in Indianapolis on Saturday nights, uh, we're on WIV, or excuse me, WIC, a huge ethnic talk station in India. It's the, the top talk uh, in that marketplace. And uh, so, I mean, we have a huge number of listeners there. Edge Marco host, he's estimated that we probably have at least 300,000 radio listeners per week. But again, there's really no way to, to, uh, to be sure. Yeah. We can confirm those stations. I'll tell you this, in the uh, syndicated radio world, if you ask, if you look at the other syndicated shows out there, they'll claim they have a certain number of stations. And if you actually audit their station list, uh, it turns out there's like probably half of them that aren't even on the air anymore, or that they've changed uh, changed formats. I am the affiliate relations person for Free Talk Live, so what I do during the day, and partially what I'm doing here at this conference, is I talk to program directors, and I call our stations every three months just to check in, make sure they're doing fine. Nobody else does this in the business. Rush Limbaugh doesn't pick up his phone and you know talk to uh, the individual guys that run his affiliates. I do that, and so I know when we get taken off the air. And if we get taken off the air, and that happens because stations change formats and that kind of thing, then I remove that station from our list. So if there's a few stations on that list that I haven't been able to reach in like a year, maybe or maybe not they're on. So you know maybe it's 190 instead of 192, but we're darn close uh, to what we're actually on. Wow, I'm really liking the satellite solution. It's like Dash. It's a borderless solution. What's not to love? Yeah, I love being on satellite. I had to actually, uh, you know, I, I didn't have to convince Mark Edge. He's always been a skeptic of it because you can't easily measure it. Um, you know, we're over in sub-Saharan Africa, and in a lot of cases, satellite's going to reach people that don't even have an internet connection um, out there. But, uh, you know, it was, it was real proof of concept when we had Akko from Cameroon call in and talk about how he was actually listening on the, on the satellite and tell us all these stories about what life is like uh, in Cameroon and uh, and, and there's actually a video on the proposal which tells you a little bit more about him and actually shows photos of them setting up a, a satellite system. And so we've learned a lot uh, from, from talking to him. And you know, obviously you can only listen to, to us if you speak English, but there are a fair amount of English speakers and, and a decent amount of English speaking con uh, countries. Uh, for instance, Cameroon, they actually have uh, conflict over their, uh, their English versus their French speakers. And there's almost like a, a schism in the country and a secessionist movement that's based on uh, based on language. So yeah, it's, it's really exciting to be able to reach people all around the, the world. And eventually we'd love to see that, that signals expand, you know, and, and reach uh, South America and reach, uh, you know, the Middle East. And, and Mark was like, well, you should have included that in the proposal. I'm like, well, you know, let's take it, you know, step, step by step here and maybe eventually down the line, uh, we can expand to, uh, to include new areas of the world. So do you want to talk about the ads a little bit? Because um, just for the people, are international listeners what are the ads like because you've been playing them for a while is it someone really sexy european voice or like what what is it just want to break that down so just to remind you uh our dash sponsorship did expire at the end of 2017 and we just hadn't gotten around to uh to you know re uh reproposing it so right now the ads aren't running on free talk live uh, but they will be again presuming you know everything gets approved um, but once they are, we do have several different versions. We went to, uh, I think it was like Fiverr, one of those sites where you can, you know, get different people's voices. Because we, did, we didn't want it just to be in our voices. We wanted our voices on it, but also, you know, people who you don't necessarily recognize at once. So, yes, you know, some uh, female with a nice voice, various different uh, female male voices to try to make it sound like it's, you know, a community of people that are, are interested in this. And it's not just the host of the show or something like that. Um, you know, we cover different aspects of Dash and what makes it useful and what makes it important. And actually, it's been a, a little while since uh, since I reviewed the ads. So uh, we'll probably need to review them and maybe freshen them up a little bit would be my guess. 
Yeah, I, the only reason I, I bring that up because I remember talking to Joelle about this back back in the day, and we were talking about uh, messages and lines. So when I was saying about sexy voice, I think there was a time that they were floating the idea of perhaps using Joelle to actually record some of the messages for some of the adverts. I don't know if they actually went to the final cut, but um, that, I was just having a bit of fun with Joelle. I was just trying to get a reaction from him. Did you record one, Joelle? I don't recall. Yeah, I recorded a bunch of them. And okay. uh, random times listening to Free Talk Live, I heard, I heard my smooth buttery tones. <laughs> so definitely, um, definitely need a little bit more diversity of voice. Maybe we can get Chuck Williams to do some. <laughs> What about Matthew McConaughey or Morgan Freeman? All right, all right. All that right. might be outside of our budget. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're on Fiverr. You might be able to get an impressionist or something. Right. <laughs> That's true. But, um, maybe, uh, maybe get Amanda, put her to work. Yeah, like, do it for sure. So, Ian, are you going to this pork fest thing? Because I'm heading over to the states. You're you're in the libertarian like center of the world, it seems. So uh, it'll be cool to meet you and the AnyPay people as well. Yeah, I know AnyPay is sponsoring pork fest this year, so they're definitely going to be there. Uh, I won't be at pork fest, but I'll be there the five days prior to pork fest. I'll be going to what they call fork fest. Um, because, you know, as you know, like in the world of cryptocurrency and religion and politics, once a group gets too large, it tends to experience uh, schisms and forks. And so somebody came up with the idea of Fork Fest, uh, which is a decentralized libertarian camping event, uh, because they felt like, you know, some people feel like Porcupine Freedom Festival, aka Fork Fest, is just a little bit too organized. Uh, it's, you know, too expensive. So the, there's no tickets for Fork Fest, there's no organizers. And so it's just sort of like whatever it is people want to do and want to create is what's going to happen at ForkFest. So it's going to be the second year of, uh, of ForkFest. So if you're going to be there a little bit early, then you'll be able to, uh, to come to that. Um, otherwise, you, you ought to um, drop by Keen if you have time and uh, we'll take you downtown and you can you know, come and actually use your dash in real life. <laughs> yeah, that might, be in the, that might be in the cards. We'll see. Um, definitely be more, sure. Port, more Portsmouth located on the trip up. But... Well, if you want to come by Keen, we'd love sojourn. to have you on Free Talk Live. We'd, uh, we'd have you sit in. You can sit in as a guest. So, well, man, to I'm definitely going to try and visit as many businesses and to support them and show them that it's great. Um, ah, well, then you want to know this, um, if, if I may interrupt. Uh, so at Porkfest, just down the street from the campground, there's a brand new restaurant. Uh, it is called the, uh, the, oh, the Tavern of some sorts. The Ye old, Ye old Tavern of that. Anyway. It's right down the street. It's in the Cabot Inn. Um, it's literally a stone's throw. You could you could stumble to the ca to the Cabot. It's very very close. Yeah, in and fact, the lady. Um, in the, previous years, I've done that before. I stayed at the Cabot Inn, just walked the it's much point four miles down to the yeah. actual campground. And yeah, actually, I know that restaurant. I actually, have the restaurant in there. It just like could not be more conveniently located. And it's brand new. They just opened it, or if it was something else before, it's now under new ownership. And the new owner is the former manager, or she's going to be the former manager. She's still the manager at Rogers Campground. She told me when I was talking with her about Fork Fest that she'd opened up this restaurant and that she wanted to take cryptocurrency because she's been around Rogers and Fork Fest for so many years and has heard so much about crypto from all the people that have been there. So I was like, well, I can help you with that. And so I walked her through uh, the AnyPay setup over the phone because you know it would be like three hours for me to drive up there. Walked her uh, through that process, and she is she is, should be up and running, uh, which means that you will be able to, in addition to spending your crypto at Porkfest, you will definitely be able to spend Dash at this lady's restaurant, which is just down the street. So you'll certainly be able to do that while you're here. Excellent. I can't wait. I'm really looking forward to it. And uh, obviously, I'm going to have to adjust being British because you have a different tipping culture over there as well. So typically, when I get a, a taxi ride or something, I always try to work my magic to get them to download the app and see if I can tip them with Dash instead. Sure. So, um, I'm going to try and work my magic over there as well. And, um, I'm sure Joel's going to be a fantastic guide for me showing me about with the, the AnyPay people as well. I think it's really important to show support, but also actually listen to them because sometimes we need to understand the merchant's perspective, whether you know it's just Dash accepted stickers to put on the door or whatever, just like... It's really, it's really important that we have that yeah. dialogue. 
we've got the stickers actually uh, in Keene. If you come to Keene, I'll, you'll see uh, at the, almost every place that accepts Dash, I've got them with the uh, the Dash accepted stickers up. You know, I bought I bought like twenty or thirty of them, and you know, hand them out to whoever it is that's willing to put it up. And you just reminded me of something when you were talking about tipping. Um, this has not gone public yet, so I guess I'm going to go ahead and make it uh, public oh, right goodness. now. Um, oh goodness! So yeah, this is Joel. You already know what this is. Um, Maybe. <laughs> so oh, crap, is the site actually up? There was a there was an outage earlier today, and I don't have my uh, my browser in front of me. I'm hoping it's up. If you could check it for me, Joel, cryptotip.org. Uh, let me know if it's if it's online uh, right now. What uh, what happened last year? And if not, I'll bug my uh, my administrator to to get that working. So there is a great great website um, called BC Tip. Have uh, either of you guys uh, ever heard of it, Mark? No? Uh, it's not so, ringing any bells, to be honest. Wait, so I'm interested. Some, somebody <laughs> brilliant uh, came up with uh, a site for Bitcoin tip, printable Bitcoin Thanks, tips. And uh, you go to the site, you tell them how many tips you want to print, you tell them the amount that you want, and then you send the amount of Bitcoin, and then they give you a, a printable sheet. You print it up, you clip, you know, clip them out, and they're like business card sized, uh, little little QR codes. And then when you scan the QR code, you go to a web page that gives a newbie kind of like an introduction to cryptocurrency and recommends wallets to download and then allows that person to transfer the amount of Bitcoin to their wallet. Well, this is something that we thought was really cool and we use very heavily in Keen. Uh, when we were out, out to eat, you know, we would leave these Bitcoin tips in addition to a cash tip, right? So you want to give a good cash tip and then you leave a, this Bitcoin tip on top. Well, of course, when the Bitcoin, uh, you know, fees went insane, it became really, you know, crazy to actually use the site because the fees were so expensive. And I'm like, so I contact the guy that ran the site and I said, hey, are you going to add any other cryptos like, say, Dash uh, to, to your site? He said he didn't have any plans to do that. But uh, the site's open source, so you know if somebody else wanted to do it, that'd be fine. Uh, so I brought one of my programmer friends in. I said, "Hey, man, are you willing to help with this project? As far as I'm concerned, you can keep all the revenues from it because there's like a tipping option to the site as well. So like when you, you know, when you use the site, you can leave a tip for the site. So you can keep all the revenues. I don't care. I just want to have something else that we can, you know, use for crypto tips. And so we came up with this idea. We're launching it with Dash." Uh, and so it's Dash only at the moment, and it'll probably be Dash for the foreseeable future because you know we're still working out, you know, maybe a few kinks in the system. And uh, Joel, were you able to see if that site's online? It's just stuck loading, so I guess not. Okay. Yet. So that's sorry. Okay. Tip .org. Yeah. I uh, hopefully this will actually be up and running. It was. It's been up and running, but there was a major issue with uh with my web server this morning, which doesn't happen very often. And so of course, right when I'm re ready to talk about it, <laughs> it's when it is when it goes down. Um, but uh, it's a, it's I'm going to call it a public beta uh, at the moment, and uh, we've we've tested it in private. So what you do is you go there when the site's up, and you again you'll you'll pick the amount of uh, dash that you'd like to have on the tip. You can pick the number that you want to print out. It totals all that up. If you want, you can add a tip to the site. You send the amount of dash to the site. It then gives you access to the page. You print them up, and then you just leave those with uh, with people as tips. And the coolest thing about it is. Uh, if you put your email in, it will send you an email with all of the tips and like there's unique codes for each one of the tips. And so what happens is when somebody actually caches it, when somebody renews the tip, when they actually collect the dash from the tip, you'll get an email. And each one of those entries has a little notes field on it. So let's say you go to this restaurant in Lancaster right down, uh, right down the street from, uh, from the campground. And you leave one of these tips there for the for the waitress. Well, let's say you ask what the waitress is. Her name name is Shelly, and uh, you know you were at this restaurant. So you go to your page on the crypto tip site. You can type in a little note like, "Oh, I left this tip with Shelly at uh, this restaurant." And so when Shelly goes ahead and collects the dash, you get an email, and then you can click back and see, "Oh." This was the person who collected the tip. So then you know, like if you live in the area like we do, you could go back. And you could follow up with her and say, "Oh, hey, I noticed that you, you know, you collected the tip." And so it's, it's a really awesome tool uh, for kind of prospecting newbies, uh, bringing new people into the world of, in this case, Dash, uh, which is very, very exciting. So that's one of the coolest features about it is that you can really track what's going on with the tips. And second coolest feature is the tips come back to you. So if you print the tips out. And let's say you print up 10 different tips and you hand out all 10 of them over you know, a couple weeks when you're eating out and about. 
and only like one or two of them actually get collected, because most of them won't. Most people are probably going to throw them away. They're not going to spend the time to look at it. Well, then you get all the rest of it back because you set an expiration date for the tip. So it's printed right there on the tip. This tip expires on, you know, a month from now or two months from now or whatever. And so you, you're not risking anything. Uh, you're able to actually share Dash with as, as many people as you want to easily by just, as, you know, handing them this business card size uh, piece of paper. And in a lot of cases, you know, if you're at a busy restaurant, you don't have time to sit there or the, the, the waitress doesn't have time to sit there and talk to you about Dash. She's busy. She's got to go and deal with, with the next table. That expiration option is really interesting to me because we've had many conversations before about um, privacy and security and how you should store your crypto. Obviously, we're big advocates of hardware wallets. I use a Trezor myself, and I can't speak highly enough of it. They're great, but yeah. In terms of expiration date, I've always wanted... I'm just going to float this idea by you because we've already discussed this before, but I'll just be curious to hear your thoughts on this. Um, so... When Evolution launches, don't you think it would be a really good feature to have a kind of like safety backup feature where you could put, you could allocate percentages to different wallets, be them friends or family. And if you didn't log in to, you know, the, something terrible happened to you and you just disappeared off the face of the earth, then after 180 days or maybe a year's time, then that accounts balance would then get separated automatically, decentralized. Um, to those uh, addresses and you could set the percentages. Um, do you think that's a cool idea? Because I've seen no one else tackle this, but I think it's actually yeah. a thing that's quite feasible and easy to do. Yeah, that's an interesting idea. I mean, I know that's something that a lot of people are concerned with with cryptocurrency is how do you handle, you know, it's always such a kind of an individual thing. How do you handle uh, unexpected things happening in people's lives? And uh, it would be interesting for somebody to come up with a solution, whether it's that or some sort of uh, modification. Obviously, the the crypto tip site is centralized, meaning that it's the site that tracks all those things. So you know, yours, yours sounds like maybe a, a more decentralized solution. Yes, yeah, I like the it's, it's pie in the sky, right? <laughs> but it's it's good thinking though, because yeah, yeah sure. I, I talk to Brian about this all the time. Like, what what are the best safety measures? And we say, well, you know, you could leave an envelope with a certain bit of information with a, with a lawyer or a solicitor, and then you can leave a bit of a family member or password over here. And then you know, if the worst happens, everyone could come together, you know, and just and then try and get that money. And it's just like, well, I'm sure there's a better way where you don't have to trust anyone and it's trusted in the network, right? Trust the network to do it. Right. So, yeah, I think that would be amazing. And I think that should be something that should be automatically uh, just built in. Hey, imagine Satoshi's millions right now. We won't, that wouldn't even be having a conversation. So I think we need to learn by past mistakes. And I think it actually scares a lot of people as well. That's why I'm a bit, you know, I think moving forward, the username and password, getting you know grannies and everyone involved for mass adoption is so, so important. Because when you get these uh, new wallet applications and you see all these different seeds and words and stuff, it scares people. If they're new to cryptocurrency, it's a lot for them to take in. They're kind of like, well, actually, no, I'm, I'm too comfortable. You know, I don't really want to conform to this. Thoughts? Yeah, I like that Crypto Tips website. We, I think it's worthy of an article. That, that seems really cool. Yeah. Well, cool. Hey, um, I will definitely let uh, you guys know when that is back online. My, my uh, technician is on the road uh, today. Hopefully he'll be able to get it back up here tonight. And uh, I don't, at this point, uh, we need to add like a good contact method to the site for people to report bugs. Because uh, until I mentioned it here, it was just sort of in a private beta. Um, but uh, so, yeah, any feedback anybody has, you can email me directly and I'll get it over to my guy. I'm Ian at freetalklive.com. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited about it because it's, it's such a great tool to be able to introduce all kinds of new people and to do it quickly. Because like I said, if your waitress is busy, you're not going to have time to talk to her. She's going to be busy. You don't want to talk to her. You don't right. want to bother her with that. You just want to leave a good cash tip. If you don't leave a good cash tip, it's definitely going to get thrown away, right? So you leave a good cash tip and then you lay down. What I'll do is I do $10, $10 dash tips because I want to make sure it's enough money to make somebody say oh well, this is worth my time to actually look at right like you don't want to do a dollar or two dollars that's in my opinion i mean you could but you know you want to you want to entice somebody to actually look at this and again if you leave 10 of these things down you'll be lucky if one of them actually you know one or two of them actually gets redeemed so it's not a huge uh it's not a huge outlay necessarily and the person will learn about dash when they go to the qr code so the qr code isn't a private key it's a url so they scan that QR code with their with their phone, 
then they can go and read about Dash. It recommends uh, like Coinomi and uh, the Edge wallet because we're you know we want to make sure people have the ability to use other cryptos as well. Um, not that the Dash wallet's a bad wallet; it's a fine wallet. Um, but uh, but uh, using, <laughs> recommending some of the multi cryptos helps people if they decide they want to expand out because we have to be realistic. You know, the world isn't just Dash. In the same way, when when you're when you're pitching uh, when you're pitching cryptocurrency to local businesses, it's like Joel was saying before. You know, if you go into a local business. They don't just take Visa, you know. It's Visa, it's Mastercard, and then maybe American Express or something like that. So, uh, so it's important to you know to be, to realize that you know there there probably are going to be people interested in doing something something else. So we recommend some good multi crypto wallets. Give them instructions on how to go through it, and then they get instructions on how to redeem their Dash uh, directly into the wallet. And it's slick and it works well. And uh, I wish the website was up right now. So I apologize about that. I have a question about that uh, about. You mentioned the edge wallet. Would you find it valuable if there was a place people could go, a link where you would download the edge wallet that would start preloaded with only the Dash wallet, and then you could add other coins if you so ch chose, but it would start yes. with the Dash wallet? That, that would, be, would be really good. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, because right now, it doesn't start with, uh, with Dash. And in fact, you have to go through a couple of extra steps in order to, uh, to get to the Dash on that uh so yes i agree i'll, I'll have to talk to this the, the ceo actually floated the idea before me so of doing that and then enabling instant send as well on the mm -hmm. on the edge wallet and so i'll have to to see how, how it can arrange that not now a uh, comment now we're talking about tipping this is like in-person tipping i have to give a shout out to my dash wallet.org which is a phenomenal tipping platform you can just send dash to anyone's Twitter username, their Discord username, their email address on Reddit, whatever. It's also it also works as an interface for a hardware wallet like Trezor or Ledger that lets you instant send out of hardware wallets, and it has a, a semi-trusted mixing service too, so you can actually send private send transactions out of your hardware wallet, for example, or just with just a clean web interface as long as you trust their node. However, in the most recent iteration of their proposal, they're giving you the ability to select your own node for mixing. So you'll be able to use private send to buy your coffee from your phone. And they're coming out with native iOS and Android apps. So big, just they didn't pay me anything. I'm just a big fan of my dash wall and what they've done. It's like, it's cool to see some extra function, real world functionality in dash before we have evolution come out and like finish the job. Well, well I loved your article, Joel. I'm uh, sorry to interrupt you. I loved your article recently, and it's been in my show prep, and we haven't read it on the air, but I, I want to at some point, uh, where you said that you know the biggest uh, benefit of Dash is the biggest holdback or whatever, the b biggest purported mm -hmm. benefit. You know, talking about how there's so many people who are just waiting for evolution before they get out there with Dash. And it's like, don't wait. Dash is already there. It's I mean, with the with the AnyPay system. You know, it's already there for people to use in real life. It's not hard to use it. We've had, you know, years of development on cryptocurrency wallets and all that. You know, now's the time for people to get out there and start talking about uh, cryptocurrency. If, if you wait, then somebody else is going to beat you to the punch. So I thought that was a great article. Well, anytime you want to have me on the show to talk about it, you know, I'm, I'll am never shut up. It's kind of my job, in fact. Mm. Hey, have we done an article on the, the Dash, the... My dash wallet? Wallet? Yeah. yeah, we've done a we've done one about the old one, about the first time when they just came with the web interface and the tipping, but now that the tipping is live, and then now that there's some extra stuff in the works, when all that stuff comes out, it'll it'll deserve another article. That's for yeah, sure. yeah. Sure. And our boy Ken Bozak is working on recording a tutorial video a video for my dash wallet Ooh. as well. But I just want to rewind. Do -do 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 -do. DJ, come on, my selector. No, now with I, that, that's the effect. I, I, I want to put some more emphasis on what Joel just said because I don't think people were listening. You can send private send transactions through your mobile phone with mydashwallet.org. Just think about all those other privacy coins. Can you do that? No. Get my Hulk Hogan on. I don't couple. think so. Over there? No, I don't think so either. This yeah. is huge. No one's talking about it. It's major. 
Now, that's the thing is there's a couple of wallets for other coins. I believe there's a couple of Monero and mobile wallets that also allow you to select your own node, etc. I don't know. There's a couple that got into the app store or whatever. It got removed. There's, there's been all kinds of turmoil around that. But the big thing is you're not going to be able to buy your coffee with like $1 fees. And also Dash is working on with the deterministic masternode lists with 12.4 whenever that comes out this year you'll be able to start trustlessly mixing from your phone. You're not going to have to have your own full node. You're not going to have to mix. You're off that, not going to have to point to a node. You're not going to trust anyone. And that's going to be a first for crypto is anonymous, trustless mobile transactions. Mm, and with that, we should probably wrap it up. Oh, yeah. That's what she's saying. Well, I'd just love to thank uh, Ian for coming on. He's joined us from an event in New York, and he's been absolutely fantastic. There's a few choppy moments, but we really appreciate you coming on. Thank you for doing for all your outreach on the ground, your grassroots movement, bringing on these merchants on board. Is there anything you'd just like to shout out? Where can people go to find out more about you, your shows, follow you on Twitter? Go for it. Yeah, I'm on, I'm on Twitter, uh, FTL, maybe it's FTL underscore Ian. Um, uh, freetalklive.com of course we're on seven nights a week I won't be on tonight because we're, uh, we're here we'll be traveling back to New Hampshire this evening we'll be uh, in person doing our show from the campground uh, at Rogers Campground coming up at uh, ForkFest you can go to forkfest.party if you want to learn more about that particular event lrn.fm is the Liberty Radio Network again that's where you guys are heard uh, in podcast form so folks can go and check that out and, uh, and then, of course, there's the proposal that's currently in place. So for any master nodes that are watching, thank you in advance for uh, your votes. And if you're concerned, certainly uh, post any concerns or questions. Uh, always happy to address anything there. I really appreciate uh, the interview, guys. Mate, I'd love to have you back on at some point. So, sure, guys, anytime. before we wrap up, is there anything we want to highlight? No, no SEC stuff, okay? We'll save that for later. <laughs> yep. So Ian's got the proposal in, apparently. And um, it's it's hard to keep up with so many proposals. And obviously, like I had to basically take like a month off of not giving a crap about any proposals just because it was too much. Got too heated. Too many people were like Shark Tank is like hyenas fighting over a carcass. Arr. And uh, I think a lot of people are just used yeah. to the Treasury being massive and be able to fund everything. And, you know, jet planes, tour buses, whatever, throw, throw a master note at Huobi, who cares? Just throwing stuff all over the place. And now it's like, um, <laughs> it's now it's like a more sensible operating budget for a robust ecosystem, but a lot of it has to be more focused on actual building up Dash's infrastructure and adoption right now. But, you know, make no mistake, as soon as the price is back up, there's going to be more room for people to just throw all kinds of big dollar, big, you know, splashy kind of promotion type stuff yeah. yeah well that was episode 55 of the dash force free amigos podcast please make you make sure you share and subscribe this video and also like kick punch that like button as well it really helps us <laughs> out um and also feel free to comment on the videos as well i always do keep an eye out for your comments and it's always a big help help us grow help Help us help you help get Dash out there. I think that's what I want to say. Um, we'll be back next Friday, every Friday, same Dash time, same Dash channel, 3 p.m. EST, 8 p.m. BST, if you're on my side of the pond. And, yeah, thank you for watching. Have a fantastic weekend, and we'll see you soon. Bye now. Take care. Have a good weekend. Bye.